Queen Elizabeth. I was one of the most influential and successful rulers in English history. She reigned from 1558 to 1603, a period known as the Elizabethan era, which saw the flourishing of English literature, arts, exploration, and commerce. She also faced many challenges and threats, both domestic and foreign, and managed to overcome them with her intelligence, courage, and charisma. How did she rise to power and become one of the most magnificent queens in history? This article will explore her early life, her accession to the throne, her religious settlement, her foreign policy, and her legacy. Early life. Elizabeth was born on September 7, 1533, at Greenwich Palace near London. She was the only surviving child of King Henry VIII and his second wife, Anne Boleyn, who had married after Henry divorced his first wife, Catherine of Aragon, in order to have a male heir. Elizabeth was thus the heir presumptive to the throne, but her position was precarious. In 1536, when she was only two years old, her mother was executed on charges of adultery and treason, and her marriage to Henry was annulled. Elizabeth was declared illegitimate and stripped of her title of princess. She was then placed under the care of various governesses and tutors, who gave her a remarkable education in languages, history, philosophy, and religion. Elizabeth's fortunes changed again when her father died in 1547 and was succeeded by her half-brother, Edward VI, the son of Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour. Edward was a devout Protestant and tried to impose his religious reforms on the country. He also excluded his two half-sisters, Mary and Elizabeth, from the succession in favor of his cousin, Lady Jane Grey, who was also a Protestant. However, when Edward died in 1553 at the age of 15, his will was ignored and Mary, the daughter of Henry's first wife, Catherine of Aragon, became queen. Mary was a staunch Catholic and reversed Edward's reforms, restoring the authority of the Pope and the traditional practices of the church. She also persecuted many Protestants, earning her the nickname of Bloody Mary. Elizabeth, who was secretly sympathetic to the Protestant cause, was suspected of being involved in several plots to overthrow Mary, and was imprisoned in the Tower of London for nearly a year. She narrowly escaped execution, but remained under close surveillance. In 1558, Mary died without an heir, and Elizabeth, who was next in line, became queen. Accession to the throne. Elizabeth was crowned as the Queen of England and Ireland on January 15, 1559, at the age of 25. She inherited a kingdom that was deeply divided by religious strife, threatened by foreign enemies, and burdened by debt. She also faced the pressure of marriage and producing an heir, as she was the last of the Tudor dynasty. However, Elizabeth was determined to rule by herself and to restore stability and prosperity to her realm. She chose a group of loyal and able advisors, led by William Cecil, whom she created Baron Burghley, and relied on their counsel and support. She also cultivated a close relationship with her subjects, using her charm, wit, and eloquence to win their affection and loyalty. She became known as Gloriana, the Virgin Queen, and Good Queen Bess. Religious Settlement One of the first and most important tasks that Elizabeth faced was to resolve the religious conflict that had plagued England for decades. She wanted to establish a middle way between the extremes of Catholicism and Protestantism and to create a national church that would be acceptable to most of her people. She also wanted to avoid provoking the wrath of the Pope and the Catholic powers of Europe, especially Spain and France. To achieve this, she enacted a series of laws that came to be known as the Elizabethan Religious Settlement. These laws included the Act of Supremacy, 1559, which declared Elizabeth as the Supreme Governor of the Church of England and required all clergy and public officials to swear an oath of allegiance to her. The Act of Uniformity, 1559, which restored the Book of Common Prayer, a liturgical guide that was based on the moderate Protestantism of Edward VI, but also retained some Catholic elements, such as vestments and ceremonies. The 39 Articles, 1563, which defined the doctrine of the Church of England and affirmed its adherence to the core beliefs of Christianity, but also allowed some flexibility in interpretation and practice. 
The Elizabethan religious settlement was a compromise that aimed to balance the interests and preferences of different factions within the country. It was not universally welcomed and faced opposition and resistance from both Catholics and Puritans, who wanted more radical changes. However, it was largely successful in creating a sense of national identity and unity, and in preventing major religious wars and rebellions. Foreign policy Elizabeth's foreign policy was guided by two main objectives, to protect England's security and sovereignty, and to promote England's trade and exploration. She faced several challenges and threats from abroad, such as the rivalry with Spain, which was the most powerful and wealthy empire in the world, and which had close ties with the Pope and the Catholic League. Spain was hostile to Elizabeth's religious settlement and supported several plots and invasions to overthrow her and replace her with Mary, Queen of Scots who was a Catholic and a claimant to the English throne. Elizabeth eventually executed Mary in 1587, after she was implicated in a conspiracy to assassinate her. In 1588, Spain launched the Armada, a huge fleet of ships and soldiers, to invade England and restore Catholicism. However, the Armada was defeated by the English Navy, led by Francis Drake and other famous seamen, and by the bad weather, which scattered and wrecked many of the Spanish ships. The defeat of the Armada was a huge blow to Spain's prestige and power, and a great victory for England and Protestantism. It also marked the beginning of the decline of Spain, and the rise of England as a maritime and colonial power. The involvement in the Netherlands, which was a region under Spanish rule, but which had rebelled against the oppression and persecution of the Spanish king, Philip II. Elizabeth supported the Dutch rebels who were mostly Protestants and sent troops and money to aid them. She also signed the Treaty of Nonsuch in 1585, which formally allied England with the Netherlands and appointed Robert Dudley, Earl of Leicester, as her commander-in-chief there. However, the intervention in the Netherlands was costly and ineffective, and Elizabeth eventually withdrew her forces in 1587, after Leicester's failure and death. The war in the Netherlands continued until 1648, when the Dutch Republic was recognized as an independent state by Spain and the rest of Europe. The exploration and colonization of the New World, which was a vast and unknown territory that offered opportunities for trade, wealth, and adventure. Elizabeth encouraged and sponsored many voyages of discovery and settlement, such as those of John Hawkins, Martin Frobisher, Humphrey Gilbert, Walter Raleigh, and Francis Drake. These explorers sailed across the Atlantic Ocean and the Pacific Ocean and visited places such as Africa, the Caribbean, North America, and South America. They also challenged the Spanish monopoly and dominance in the New World and often engaged in piracy and plundering of Spanish ships and colonies. Elizabeth's support for these activities earned her the admiration and gratitude of her subjects, but also the enmity and resentment of the Spanish king and the pope who considered them as illegal and immoral. Legacy Elizabeth died on March 24, 1603, at Richmond Palace, after a long and prosperous reign of 44 years. She was buried in Westminster Abbey, where a magnificent monument was erected in her honor. She was succeeded by her first cousin twice removed, James VI of Scotland, the son of Mary, Queen of Scots, who became James Tharn of England, and who united the crowns of England and Scotland. Elizabeth left behind a legacy that was admired and celebrated by many generations. She was regarded as one of the greatest monarchs in English history and as a symbol of strength, wisdom, and glory. She presided over a golden age of culture, commerce, and exploration, and fostered a sense of national pride and identity. She also established a religious settlement that shaped the character and destiny of the Church of England, and that influenced the development of Anglicanism and Protestantism around the world. She was remembered as the Queen of England, the Queen of Hearts, and the Queen of the World.